It's been requested that I show you some of the early pieces of equipment that uh, I used for testing the principles of the scanner in the early days. As it happened, an old lathe bed was available in the lab. And by using modern equipment also found around, I was able to build this lab test machine, which would demonstrate the principle of the system. The early tests used a radioactive source, but later this X-ray tube was used to speed up the process. The X-ray tube and detector scanned backwards and forwards while the collimated beam was passing through the object to be scanned. In this case, it was a pickle brain in a box. At the end of each stroke, the object was rotated through one degree. This process then went on for 180 degrees, and it took about six hours to complete a picture. The values given by the detector were recorded on paper tape and passed to a computer this mathematically reconstructed a picture of the density of each pixel of the material within the slice. This is the first rather incomplete picture we took of this pickled brain showing a tumour at three different window heights. Later all manner of things were scanned including cow's brains, pig's bodies, bones, tumours and many other things which gave us this led us to believe that a clinical machine would be quite worthwhile building. Although my work was vigorously supported by the Department of Health, I thought I'd better go around a few hospitals and find out exactly what they thought about the system. I found it very discouraging. Many of the radiologists uh, didn't seem to grasp the point that uh, th this would have certain advantages. And I remember r reporting back that we would be lucky to make about 20 of these machines. Incidentally, I was wrong. Well, eventually a clinical machine was built, and this is one of the first production models, similar to the one used at Axton Morley Hospital, Wimbledon, which was the first scanner, uh, head scanner to be tested. In a similar way, the X-ray tube and two detectors scan backwards and forwards across the head. The whole assembly rotating 180 degrees around the patient. The patient put his head in a rubber bag which was surrounded by water. This te technique improved the accuracy of the absolute values of density recorded on the picture. It is interesting to note that these absolute values produced by this technique were more accurate than the modern machines, but there were disadvantages, particularly when the, the water bag burst and threw two and a half litres of water over the patient. As the machine only had two detectors, it was very slow. It took two and a half minutes to take two pictures side by side. This is a well-known picture of the first patient to be diagnosed with this machine. It shows a cyst in the frontal lobe. The machine was an immediate success, and here are some of the pictures that followed, taken by Dr. Ambrose. Originally, the pictures were to be sent over telephone lines to a central, central processor, but the arrival of the mini-computer, giving the ability to process pictures on site, saved the day. The picture could be then processed within the time of one patient being scanned, and it was recorded on Polaroid film. The success of the brain scanner led on to the production of a whole body scanner. I was very pleased when it took a very handsome picture of myself when it was tested in the laboratory for the first time. Although a little slow, 18 seconds to take a picture, the clinical results were accepted by all with enthusiasm.